So one special color that we did recently that I kind of cringed and we had to do it is we're helping sponsor the Malvern Bank uh, Super Late Model Series, Dirt Late Models here that run around the Midwest. Um, I used to race, raced with that series. We like to support them. Um, a lot of the racing series, the points leader that's leading the points for the year has some sort of special signifier and they wanted their spoilers that go across the back of the car to be a bright color and they picked bright pink um, because they race quite a race into october and around october quite a bit and they do a lot of breast cancer awareness stuff so they kind of wanted to, to go along with that theme so we um, found a neon pink at first i tried to get them to just go with a pink out of an ral color deck because that would be we, was one we'd spray before and be be easier um, I knew they probably weren't going to go for it because it wasn't bright enough. Um, so we did end up finding a neon pink. Um, since we don't do a lot of those specialty colors, I was nervous. Um, mainly because it's all my old peers in the racing um, world. And since we're going to be powder coating these spoilers that are supposed to go on the, for the points leader. And everybody's going to be looking at them. And they're going to be an attraction for drivers and fans and crews to go see i wanted it to hold up well and look good um and since we haven't sprayed a bright neon pink ever that is challenging we sprayed other neon colors but again like i've said in other videos when you get to a new special powder they're all different they're finicky so i spent a lot of time trying to find one that would hold up exterior durable and be a one coat system because there are some out there um but I couldn't find stuff in the right price range, but also just availability wasn't there. Um, didn't have them in stock and things. So we ended up settling on a powder from IFS, a neon pink, really, really bright pink. Um, and when you get in these neon colors, you gotta put a clear coat on it when it goes outside. So that way it doesn't fade because the neons fade really quickly. So. I really, you know, so going into the neon pinks, like, man, it's going to be, we want to make sure this looks good. We don't want to embarrass ourselves. And I'm like, I don't, if I can, I don't want to multi-coat this because the more coats that we add, the more chances it's going to go wrong. And then we have to redo it and we are on a tight time frame. So we we're going over aluminum, which was good. Nice bright substrate. Typically for neons, you should base coat them with a white first substrate and then the neon because the neon will show up even better since we were going over aluminum really bright substrate um i made the call that i didn't think that we needed to put the white underneath because i didn't think that that it was going to change the color very much at all because the aluminum was so bright um so i rolled the dice on that it worked out it was fine it was still super bright without the white base coat um then it was like so now i got it down to two coats the neon and the clear coat i was going back and forth on if we should put a clear on it or not because most of the time we're ra these races are done at night, so you don't have a lot of sun UV. So in reality, you're probably not going to fade that neon pink without a clear, probably at all, because it's just not out in the sun too much. But when you get to the racetrack, it's sunny. You're out in the sun for most of the later afternoon and racing in the later afternoon. So if there is a person that assumes the points lead early on in the year and they keep it all year long that same spoilers on the car all year long probably is going to start to fade this season up sun so we did put clear over it turned out really really good um it was a good powder um we have stock of it so we'll probably use it again for the malvern bank um super late model series because i'm sure they'll need more spoilers throughout the year and maybe some other parts so that was kind of our experience recently. I know that I usually say that we don't do it. This was very special because it's kind of a cause that's near and dear to my heart because we used to race a lot. We don't do it anymore. Um, so any way that I can be involved in the racing community, the dirt racing community around our area, I try to do that. So I wanted to do something cool for them. So when they requested that, I said, yeah, we'll figure it out, no problem. Um, that doesn't mean that we are in the realm of buying every special color possible. Um, but it did open my eyes a little bit to, to say that, Hey, I guess we can do this. And, um, 
we do know what we're doing. That one did not have any metallic in it. That would have added another layer of difficulty, which we've talked about that in a couple of other videos with the special colors. I got it down to a two coat system instead of three, so that eliminated um, some issues for us. One of the things that I was worried about with doing that many coats um, for this particular application is it, it's, it's racing, right? So they're gonna get beat up rocks and mud are going to hit them so when you start layering coats up you can run into some inner laminar adhesion issues where the the coats start to delaminate de from each other so i really didn't want that happening um, because chipping is going to be an issue no matter what um, when you're racing at high speeds and, and rocks and dirt is hitting it so um i was really happy that we were able to get away with the two coat system it still looked good it looked exactly like the sample panel but that was our experience with it. We might dabble with that stuff a little bit more. We were able to get the quantity of powder ordered for pretty much exactly what we needed with a little bit of extra. So it worked out good. It, it just, everything worked out on that one. Um, it doesn't always work out like that. And the cost actually worked out pretty well too. So it just, for that particular project, it wasn't a onesie twosie thing. There are multiples. Um, so it kind of, when you start getting into a little bit bigger project and um, you eliminate some of the difficulties by maybe being able to take out a coat, getting not having metallic in it, now it starts to become more like a regular project or regular color that we do at Kaser. So basically I try to take that really special color and get it as close, the process as close as possible to what we normally do. So it's trying to eliminate a lot of the errors and mistakes and um, issues that could come up that we weren't prepared for. And I tried to get as close to what we normally do as we could. So that could be something for you other coders out there to use. If you're thinking about going into special colors, or you're already really hot and heavy into them. Um, the more that you can get it to a process that you're familiar with, even when you're getting the new, you know, customers always want something new and different when you get in that special color world. If you can follow some sort of process and have some sort of regularity with your settings and and how you're doing the coats and the film thicknesses and the gel and the cure times hopefully um, that'll eliminate some of the headache that I've talked about in the other videos and you'll end up with a, a good product like the neon pink spoilers that we have that are that we got coated for the Malvern Bank Super Late Mall Series. We'll post some pictures of it. One thing that's interesting, when you get to the really bright colors, you try to take a picture of it, can't really get the actual full effect as you do with the human eye. Um, it actually comes out a little bit red. It doesn't really, you don't see that vivid fluorescent neon that you can see with your eye. So something to think about as well.